Hi and welcome to this tutorial from Photo Train. And this is a, a free file that you can download from the magazine. So there's a link in the magazine for you to do so. And basically it's a, a PSD file, so a Photoshop file. When you open it, basically this is what you see. It's just a grey screen. And if you look at the layers, you may see them all displayed to start with. It depends on what it looks like when you open it but there are folders on there and there are different things within the folders and at the bottom it's got a layer and it says select layer and put your pick so that's a, a little um, <laughs> a little clue there of what you have to do so basically you have to click on the bottom layer it may be that these are closed so I'm just going to close these folders and you can see there's three, you've got effects, colour textures and border edges. So making sure I'm selected the bottom on the layer. I then open up the file I want to work with. And I'll start with this one. So open this picture. And basically what we do is click on the move tool at the top left of the toolbox. We have the move tool on it. You'll see that I can see the two files at the top there. So this is the file that I'm viewing, and this is the file that you downloaded that we'll be working on. So we put the move tool in onto the layer there of the actual bird in this case, and we drag it up to the top over the title bar of the other file, holding down the mouse all the time. And when you do that, it'll open the other file. And if I move the mouse onto the screen and let go, there's my picture. Okay, now it depends on the size of your picture. It will actually fit on this. It is 2,000 pixels wide. So it's a nice size to work with pictures. It's big enough to print. But obviously, very large files, they don't fit. You've got to make it fit. Also, notice that we're working in landscape. Now you can work in portrait and we'll be looking at that on the next bit of this video. But first of all, let's resize this so it fits nicely onto the, the actual picture. If we click on the magnifying glass, it's all there. Okay, so once we've got the magnifying glass, make sure that it's on the minus sign and click one at a time and make the picture quite small to start with and then you can click on the move tool and you see how big the picture is now so you can move it we can resize it so I'm going to resize it from the corner until I've got the size I want to fit on the picture I actually want to crop a bit off now what we'll be doing on this is we'll be creating borders around this so we don't want to actually get the head too close to the edge uh, otherwise we will be having things coming over the head so you need to think about that when you when you use a picture make sure you've got a bit of a, a distance around the image that you use so you can position it more centrally onto the picture if you're going to be using the borders uh, you don't have to use the border edges that's entirely up to you. Okay, so once we've got the picture there, I'll commit by clicking the tick on the options bar, or you can press enter on the keyboard, and then I'm going to double click the hand tool on the toolbar, and that will just make the picture fit the screen so we can see what we're doing. Okay, now if we look at our layer palette again, we can see now we've got the layer above the layer where we clicked originally so it's sandwiched between the bottom layer and the folders above so that's the important part it must be in that position for this to work now let's just look first of all at the border edges so i'm going to open that by clicking on this little arrow to the side of the folder so that closes and opens the folder and we can see different effects now I'm going to drag this a little bit wider. 
so you can read these and we've got valentine white valentine red circles misty edge two and misty edge so if i click to show the actual layer and you do that by clicking the eye you can see straight away you get that effect and that's maybe all you want that that will use that effect and you could save that um, don't overwrite the original file that's important because if you do then you know you're not gonna you, maybe you flatten the image and if you save it without giving it a different name then you're gonna overwrite your original file and you won't be able to use this so that's important to remember okay so that's that's misty edge I'm gonna take the eye off on that and we'll click on the next one and that's another version of a misty edge go to the next one and this is like a circle effect I'll go to the next one and these are valentine ones so we've got two valentine ones one in red and one exactly the same but in white and you can combine those two quite nicely so if I click on both of them you can see you can have any effect as Valentine's Day is coming up you can make your own cards or Valentine pictures or it's just nice for pictures of children and things like that pictures of, of friends or whatever to to actually put in into that format so you can use any of those different frames or borders I'll leave that one on for now I'm not actually in love with that so I won't use the Valentine one it's a nice picture but I'm not in love with it okay so now we'll look at the color textures now when we click on these you can see that it affects the color of the actual image so basically there's one with reds in there's one with blues in one with greens in one blackish one whitish and one that's got a touch of yellow in there or brown and if you click on the eyes on those you can see the different color effects you can get now you can combine more than one color so that makes it lighter because I've clicked on those two I could click on that one and it will make it darker on the black so you can see you can create any effect and you can combine as many as you want and also because they're actually layers if I click on this red and say oh I like that but it's a bit too red I could click on that there and I could lower the opacity and you can do that on any of the layers to get the effect that you want so you can color it if you added some blue for instance that would cancel out the red basically because it's the opposite color if you wanted a bit of blue there you could take that down so you can see how it affects so using the opacity allows you to get exactly what you want the effect that you want on there and you can see also it's got a slight texture effect on that also all these effects at the moment are soft light you can see the layer uh, blending style it displays in the box there where it says soft light and you could change that you could experiment with different things if you wanted it darker for instance you could use multiply and you can really experiment with the different layer styles overlay you can see it's slightly changing the image soft light which is the original one if you wanted it lighter you could use screen if you wanted to get really weird you could go for something like difference that gives a strange effect to it exclusion so you basically you can use any of these you can really experiment the most common one is soft light and, that, and that's why I've set all these at soft light but you do have the opportunity to change those to whatever you want so you could actually click on all of them it doesn't look great but you can do that so you can you can see you've got complete control over what pictures you want or what colors you want I'm probably just going to use this one this example remember you can take the opacity down if it's too much you can just take it down a touch so I'm going to bring it down to about 59 I quite like that and for this image I would probably leave it at that but let's just have a look at the other things on there so the effects 
So I'm going to close this folder now so we don't get confused with the other things. And we'll look at the effects. So the first on there is a border. Now you may not see anything happen on that when I click on it. Oh, there we go. But it depends on, on, on your background. And again, you can change the layer styles at this. This one at the moment is set on multiply. So if you've got that white edge, it will show up. It will darken the effect and it will show up nicely. Below that, we've got frame. And if I click on that, again, this one is set to normal. And you can play and come up with different things on that. A nice one sometimes is to actually use a difference. Looks nice. So that gives you like a silver instead of the gold effect. It gives you like silver and you get complementary colours to the picture because it's the opposite basically with difference. It gives you the opposite colour. So that looks quite nice. And again, you can change the opacity of these if you want to take it down slightly. You can have a less effect or more effect. So it gives you total control over the picture and what you want to do. Then we have, I'm just going to take these off for a moment. We have a flare effect. That gives this effect. If I take that one off and click on the other one, that gives a flare effect from the other side. Now those uh, are actually set and when we click on those they're set to screen and you probably want to keep those on screen otherwise if you don't and you change that you will get just put that on normal you would get that and most of the others really won't give you much effect so screen for these dark background images you really need to keep those uh, flares on on screen there we go so you can depends on what foreground you've got on there if we take the border off for instance and and this is the beauty of this you can just play put things on and take them off so we've got the misty edge on there we could take that off and yeah you can see you've got the two flare effects on there we could take that one off so you can see now all we've got on now is the color texture and that one flare and that looks really nice that's a nice image and you can add the different borders on there that's quite a nice one for that one that's probably nice okay so that, that would probably be something that i would use for, for this particular image but you can play away to your heart's content and and add things and play around with opacities and, and layer styles and basically get lots of different different effects. If I wanted that darker for instance, if I go back to the texture colours and I click on the black one and show the eye on that, that will darken it. And again if it's too dark I can change the opacity of the layer and get it exactly how I want. Perhaps don't want that frame on there. I'm going to take that off. I could just leave the border on like that. And again, on the border, you can take down the opacity if you want to lessen the effect. So, we'll take it off. Lots of different options. So, basically, that's it. That's what this does. And then, when you'd finish the image, if you just go to File, Save As, and change the file format to JPEG, it won't overwrite your original file. When you come back to this, it will save it as a JPEG, wherever you put it. You can give it a different name, and then it will bring you back to this. And if you close this without saving it, then it will revert back to the original state. So, therefore, you know, you're not going to change all the settings or changing the opacity, then you open something else and you you've got to alter it all back or whatever you will always be working with the original file so basically open the original file create what you want to create save it as a JPEG so go to file save as select JPEG from the file type give it a different name and that will not overwrite the original file when you come back and you've saved the image it was saved as a copy and you'll still have this main file open so then you close that and you're safe.
okay now just one thing we need to mention is it may be working with uh, a portrait picture so in other words the other way up so what we'll do is I'll close oh, I'll leave this out I'll, I'll use this image actually so I'm just going to delete this layer and I'll leave this effect on doesn't really matter for now but if you're working with a portrait picture what you want to do is to rotate the image now obviously if I'm using this um, flare effect then I want that at the top not not at the bottom it wouldn't look so good down the bottom it would really want to be at the top and if I've got the other one on yeah so basically if I've got the one on the right on I would have to rotate it anti-clockwise so that would be at the top if I've got this one on I'm using that one I would rotate it clockwise so it would remain at the top so if you're going to use the filters you need to think about that which one you want to use if you're using the one on the right you need to rotate to the left and vice versa for the other so I'll take this one off we're going to be working with that one so we want to rotate that clockwise so I go to image and we go to image rotation and we go 90 degrees clockwise and I'll just double click the hand tool again and that fills the screen there we go so when we now bring over our picture click on the move tool you can see straight away you can create oh, it looks quite nice like that. I won't bother resizing it it looks lovely okay so you can see we can use the effect anyway okay I hope you enjoy that and that's a freebie from Phototrain keep reading